This time we're doing another landed UFO mission, and for our squad, we have a fairly typical set of units for this mission, no surprises. We have our original Reaper, for scouting, a Ranger, for the flanking crits, two Grenadiers, for increased cover destruction, our Spark, as usual, for overdrive shooting, and a Sharpshooter, for the gunslinger abilities. Likewise for equipment, we have a fairly standard loadout. We have the blue screen rounds and talon rounds on our frontline units, as well as dragon rounds for increased damage on our Reaper. Then our secondary grenadier has the warsuit with the blaster launcher heavy weapon, and he's also carrying the mimic beacon. And finally, our main grenadier is carrying a proximity mine for the salvo overwatch combo from concealment. UFO site coordinates locked in. Move to secure the area, neutralize all hostiles. Just try to keep quiet. Just like last time, we're going to be moving to the central console location, and then we have to hack or destroy it. Once again, we also have the resistance fighter from the volunteer army order. We'll start by taking our reaper out and scouting ahead as usual. Moving as ordered. We've got our first pod already. Looks like it's an officer and a stun lancer. Moving out. And we have a second group too. An Archon and two Spectres. Let's get set up. This position is actually a little close. The Archon pod could patrol into us. Got it. Got it. Moving. Got it covered. Solid copy. Overwatching. Ideally, they both move to the same spot, so we can get them both with the same proximity mine. We can still see both pods, but we should be able to handle both of them. As we mentioned earlier, we're going to use the proximity mine to break concealment, and our grenadier will still be able to overwatch because she has salvo. Grenade out! On overwatch. Overwatch. Eyes on the prize. Affirmative. Covering now. Before we end our turn, we'll get our Reaper out of the way, so the enemies don't reveal him when they scatter. I am at your service. No one will cross. Unfortunately, our first two shots missed because they went for the Spectres with lightning reflexes. up an outbound signal coming from the UFO. It's some kind of distress beacon. You need to get inside that ship and shut down the signal before they send their whole fleet after us. They're both close to the forklift, so I would have used remote start as my opening move, but for whatever reason, it doesn't count as a target. Disappointing, but we can just use our grenadier to blow them both up. That's affirmative. Fire in the hole! 
We'll use our Reaper to finish off the Stun Lancer, since he has a guaranteed kill. We should only need one pistol shot for this officer, so we'll save lightning hands for later. Hostile terminated! We'll regroup our squad to cover the grenadier, and then move in next turn. Aye, aye. Finally! Seems doable! Moving to Overwatch! On Overwatch! We'll leave the loot for someone else, and send our Reaper forwards to scout the objective. I am trusting you. Let's do this! I've got it! Moving on target location. There better be something there. On approach. Done. Moving to position. On I'm on it. Overwatch. Moving overwatch. Affirmative. Covering now. Now we're ready. We'll open the door and see what's inside. There's nothing in view, and our spark can see the objective, so we'll go in and hack it quickly while it's quiet. Movement engaged. Initiating remote interface. We've knocked out the alien distress signal. Looks like the skies are quiet. We'll regroup and reload again, then send our Reaper out next turn to find the last pods. Good to go! Comes naturally. Reloading! On the move! On overloaded! Overwatch. On Overwatch! Overwatch! Vox says I am to obey. The invaders... Our next pod is a heavy mech, stun lancer and officer. I'm hesitant to stick it with the homing mine though, because we're a little too close currently. We'll just move out of the way and try next turn. We'll stack up near the door with the rest of our squad, in case they patrol towards us. Scanning approach vector. No problem, Power boss. Power this ship is likely to be a newer variation of the Illyrium core driving the Avengers systems. Roger that. Scanning. Moving to Overwatch. 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 Setting Overwatch. 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 We managed to kill both the mech and the officer. We'll send our hollow targeting grenadier in to take the first shot at this stun lancer. Tired of waiting around. We have 97% for chain shot, so we may as well. We'll reload and overwatch, and then send our Reaper out again to find the last pod. Come on! Get 
There's two tiles here that we can't move to, so they might be here. We'll sweep our reaper round outside to take a look. I will go. Here's the last pod, a gatekeeper, heavy mech and purifier. That move was a little risky though, we're quite close to the pod now. Our spark can actually hit them all with the Shredstorm cannon, but I decide to wait for a turn. We're not on a timer, but there's no real benefit to waiting here, we could easily deal with them all now. Luckily they didn't move, so now we can pull our Reaper back. I go what I'm needed. We could stick the gatekeeper, but it would be better if we wait until after the Shredstorm cannon, so we can use it to guarantee a shot. The friendly fire is coming from the terminal, so we should be okay to take the shot. Purifier detonated, so we killed both it and the mech in one shot. Uncontrolled variable in targeting sequence. Now that it's moved, our Reaper can't see it, so we'll just have to use hail of bullets as usual. We'll try to get a promotion for our sharpshooter, so we'll bring her in for pistol shots. Heading out. X-ray neutralized. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Once again, our endgame squad made quick work of this mission. Between our equipment and Overwatch ambushes, it was pretty routine. The only thing worth mentioning is that the Rainmaker Shredstorm Cannon can be a great way to open a fight on an unaware pod or two. If you can get a pod before it has a chance to scatter, then that's potentially quite a lot of damage, especially as part of an overdrive chain. Well done, Commander. It's always good for morale when we ace a mission like that. We'll continue scanning sites while we wait for our Shadow Chamber projects to finish. Plotting new course. Strategic resource located. Avenger plotting new course. Against the Elders, we find nothing but success. If you would have them, Commander, one of the first of my kind to be freed would join your crew to serve at the front line of our war. We have a Colonel Skirmisher now, but we probably won't be using them much. More importantly, our other Grenadier has also now ranked up to Colonel. We've got a shot at hitting the Elders hard, something we haven't tried before. You up for it, Commander? Modular Vector Rifles is pretty good, getting that extra attachment slot is always helpful. We also have another sabotage action that also has a promotion. 
The breakthrough is only four days, so we'll try to finish that. I didn't realize it at the time, but we only have one day left for our shadow chamber project. Covert is our specialty. Let's just hope your people can keep up. This specimen, this being, is something else entirely. Something beyond anything we have ever seen. And yet somehow, our troops once again prevail. That was the last of the Shadow Chamber projects, so it's time for the final story missions. New objective added. I'm keeping tabs on all our operations, Commander. Our people are standing by for your orders. We have the target site locked in, Commander. This is our chance to strike at Advent's heart. Once we control the network tower, we can finally show the world what the aliens are doing. There's no turning back after this. This is the final sequence of missions in the game, and it's broken up into two phases. The first phase is this network tower mission, where you can normally only bring three units, and you can also get these additional bonuses. And then there is the second main mission with the full six-person squad that happens immediately after. Usually what people tend to do is take a B squad on this first phase. That way if you get any injuries then your A squad is still available for the final section, but we'll see who's available. For the intel options we've got available, individual concealment I often find is more of a detriment than a benefit. It means you can't set up overwatch ambushes easily because each unit has to break their concealment separately. Ideally you either want everyone to break concealment together, or none of them to be concealed in the first place, so you get all those overwatch shots at the same time. Crit chance and aim are always solid bonuses to get. Squad side is okay, but can be a bit situational, since you'll want your squad to be mostly together anyway. And for enemies, we only have specters, codexes, mutons, and archons. We don't have any of the three endgame enemies, so this shouldn't be too bad. We'll take our three bonuses and prepare for the mission. Commander, once we move on the Advent Network Tower, it's all or nothing. We won't have time to advance our research or deal with the wounded. We should only deploy once we're fully prepared. Setting course for Sector 6, Eastern Europe. 